Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Piashank Hamakarim, and I represent Jinga Dosti uh, Group for Environmental Research and Climate Action in a 10 million population land called Kurdistan in the Middle East. I am here to tell leaders of nation and co cooperation that we, the youth generation, the regeneration, are here in growing global numbers as guardians of our mother nature and our father time and the infinite varieties of children which you have carelessly abandoned within this fragile global family. But meanwhile, let me share with you some inspiring enormous achievement that happens in my little uh, Kurdish corner of this universe. We became the, the strongest voice of the eco-friends in the Kurdistan, and now in the region, everyone is speaking about climate change and environmental. In just only three months, when the um, new cabinet announced in the region, the prime minister, solicited our environmental proposal and promised to implant it in, their, in, their, in his plan. We convinced a group of parliament members to work on renewing environmental legislation and renewable investment. And we even installed the first bicycle lines and, and start segregation of waste in the region, which is very, it was very important in the region. But my question is that the UN and the developed countries in, of our global home must now embolden the younger civil nations those developing countries who need more than just moral encouragement. Moral encouragement, everyone can give moral encouragement. But we need actual investment in renewable energy. As one of, of your younger civil nations, I came from a land of oil. But there is no renewable investment in my region. From, from the me generation to the we generation, the worldwide youth generation have become the regeneration. Sadly and dramatically perhaps, the last generation that have the choice to be or not to be. That's really the question. So my question is that, uh, will UN and developed countries, will the people who, uh, who believe in climate change, who believe in this global threat, who believe in a threat that does not care about what language do you speak, what culture you came from, or from which generation you are, are they able to help us? Are they able to? to send their companies, private companies, to make investment in the, developing, in, the developed, in the less developed countries of the world? Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you. So the question I'm hearing from that is, with countries with leaders who believe that climate change is real, what are they doing? Are they doing enough? Or are climate deniers overwhelming that conversation? President of the Marshall Islands. Um, thank you. Um, in the case of the Marshall Islands, uh, we're uh, actively working towards renewable energy. Our issue is uh, financing. And I think this is one of the area that uh, this discussion has to go towards because there are countries who believe in climate change and we're trying to do what we can to change, but we just simply do not have the resources. So it comes back to uh, developing countries and uh, resources that are out there uh, from um, uh, donor uh, partners. They need to come together and make those possible for countries that want to invest in renewable energy. We want to move forward, but we lack the resources. So um, I, I guess I'm putting that out there because we are climate, climate change believer and we want action, but we're limited by lack of resources. Thank you. Please. Uh, let me just say, against all odds, let's not forget that in 2015, all of you and governments, business, came together to agree the Paris Agreement. And let's not just put that aside, because that is, in fact, what we ought to hold governments and businesses accountable to. That's why we have the summit on Monday, which is to try to achieve the first target. So your gathering today is putting pressure on the urgency for that to happen. Without this summit on Monday, there would have been a complete silence. There would have been no movement. But what we've seen since Katowice in Poland last year is that businesses, governments are all coming to announce not the rhetoric, not any more speeches, but bringing plans on Monday. Now, that's not all governments. That's the beginning of the groundswell that you have started that we have to follow through all the way through this summit up to COP25 and COP26, where the 2020 target means we make it or we break it. That's when we have to bend the curve. 
So there's a huge amount of work we have to do here on in. And, and so to the, the last question, what's the UN doing about it? Every single one of its staff, its agencies, its funds, its programs are, are motivated, they're incentivized, they are um, committed to helping countries to implement their NDCs. The NDCs you ought to be querying, every single country, where are you on your NDCs? Look at the top 20 emitters and see who are those top 20 countries and what are we doing about targeting them reaching the, the net zero um, uh, neutral carbon target for 2050. There are so many things that we can hold specific people to account. What we can do at the UN is empower you, give you the tools, give you the space, convene, and make sure that your voices are amplified. Um, and, and the rest is really a collaboration. It's a collaboration of getting every, everyone out there to do the right thing and be on the right side of history.